Let's investigate the roots of unity, which are used to define the number theoretic transform in MLChem and MLDSA. MLChem means module lattice based key encapsulation mechanism. MLChem is described in FIPS 203. FIPS means Federal Information Processing Standard. In this document, there is a parameter denoted by zeta. Zeta is set equal to 17. We can write 17 as 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 plus 1. 17 is described as a 256th root of unity mod q, where q is the modulus. So we're describing this number over here, this integer 17, as a 256th root of unity mod q. What does this actually mean? Let's investigate this further. So let's take 17 and raise it to the power of 2 to the 7. So we have 17 to the power of 2 to the power of 7. 2 to the power of 7 is 128. Then let's use the modulo operation. So we have modulo and the modulus Q for ML chem is 2 to the power of 8 times 13 plus 1. So if we evaluate this using modular arithmetic, we're going to get 2 to the power of 8 times 13. So this is one less than the modulus. We can write this in another way. So if we take zeta, which is set equal to 17, and we raise it to the power of 128, this is congruent to minus 1 mod q. And q is this modulus over here. So if zeta to the power of 128 is congruent to minus 1, we can square this value, and then we're going to get plus 1. So let's do that underneath. If we have 17, and we raise it to the power of 2 to the 8, so we're squaring this value. So now instead of 128, we have 256 as the exponent. And then we perform the modulo operation. And I'll write this out as 3,329. That's the same as 2 to the 8 times 13 plus 1. This is a prime modulus. Then if we evaluate this, we're going to get 1. And let's write this using an alternative notation. We can write this as zeta to the power of 256 is congruent to plus 1 mod q. So we're just squaring minus 1, and we're getting plus 1. So this is the beauty of modular arithmetic. So this is what this phrase actually means. We're saying that zeta, which is 17, is a 256th root of unity mod q. And another important thing to notice about this expression over here is that we're actually dealing with a Fermat prime. So let's define that underneath here. So if we have uh, the expression, we'll, we'll use this notation, we have f sub n. f sub n is defined as 2 to the power of 2 to the power of n plus 1. So this is a Fermat number.
And a special type of Fermat number that is also a prime is called a Fermat prime. And 17 is an example of a Fermat prime. So let's list out some of the first few Fermat numbers. So if we have 0 over here, F0 is going to give us 2 to the power of 2 to the 0. And this is going to evaluate to 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then the next value, F1, that is 4 plus 1, which is 5. And then F2, that is going to be 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 plus 1. That's what we have up here. That is 17. And then what about F3? F3 is 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 3. That is 256 plus 1. That gets us to 257. And we can write this in hexadecimal as well. So we can write this as 0x for the prefix for hexadecimal. And then we have 1, 0, 1. And if we wrote 17 in hexadecimal, it would just be 1, 1. It is 16 plus 1. And let's have a look at F4, because this is a very interesting case. F4 can be written as 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 plus 1. So you see up here, 2 squared is the same as 4. So we have 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 4, and then we can expand that 4 over here. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 plus 1, that is... 65,537. So 65,536 is a power of 2, and then we just have to add 1, and that gets us to 7 over here. And if we write this in hexadecimal, we use this prefix 0x to denote that this is hexadecimal, then it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's the hexadecimal representation. And this value, F4, is also prime. So all of these values are prime. And it's very special. And it is used as the encryption exponent in RSA cryptography. So in RSA, that's Rivest Shamir Adelman, a common choice for E, the encryption exponent, which is part of the public key, is F4. You might see this notation F4, and that describes this value over here. That is a Fermat prime. So not all numbers that have this format are going to be prime. But these values over here, F0, F1, F2, F3, and F4, they're very special because they are prime numbers, as well as satisfying uh, this format over here. So that is a very interesting uh, description of, of these prime numbers. And you can see that F2 which is 17, is used as the value for zeta, which is a root of unity. And so we, we've looked at ML chem, but let's also look at ML DSA. So ML DSA means module lattice based digital signature algorithm. And this one is described in Federal Information Processing Standard, or FIPS. 204. And the value of zeta that is used is not 17. Instead, it is 1753. And we can write this as 2 to the power of 3 times 3 times 73 plus 1. So the prime factorization of 1,752 is given by this. We have 2 to the power of 3 times 3 times 73. And then we just add 1, and that gets us to 1,753. So this value over here is described, I'll write it underneath, so we can fit this in. Uh, well, actually, we can fit it here. So we, have, we can describe this as a 512th root of unity, 
root of unity mod q. And keep in mind that the modulus q is different for MLDSA. So let's investigate what this is telling us over here. So we can write that in an analogous form to what we've written up here. So we have 1,753, and we're going to raise that to the power of 2 to the 8. And 2 to the 8, that is 256. Then we use this modulo operation, and let's put the modulus Q over here, and we can write that as 2 to the power of 23 minus 2 to the power of 13 plus 1. And what do we get? We get 2 to the power of 23 minus 2 to the power of 13. That is one less than the modulus. So you can see very similar to what we have up here. So how can we write this in an alternative notation? We can write this as zeta to the power of 256 is congruent to minus 1 mod q. So this is very similar to the expression we have up here, except over here we have 128, but now we have 256. So now if we square minus 1, we're going to get plus 1. So let's write that final expression down below. So if we have the value 1,753 raised to the power of 2 to the 9, which is 512, and then we perform this modulo operation, and I'll write out this modulus as 8,380,417. This is going to give us 1. And let's write it out using this notation. So we have that value of zeta, and we are raising it to the power of 512. And this is congruent to 1 mod q. So that is why we describe this value of zeta as a 512th root of unity mod q. And q over here is this prime number. So the values of q are different for ML chem and for MLDSA. And the value of zeta is also different. So here we have 17, and over here we have 1,753. So you can see that from this definition, we get this description over here. That is what we mean by roots of unity mod q. Now the reason we are introducing this parameter zeta is because we want to define the number theoretic transform, which is called the NTT. And this parameter is very important for defining the NTT. That's going to help us speed up computations and it's going to help us efficiently implement MLChem and MLDSA as described in FIPS 203 and FIPS 204. So note that the value of zeta over here is the same as F2. So this is a Fermat number, and it's a very special type of Fermat number because it is prime. So all of these values over here, F0, F1, F2, F3, and F4, they are prime. But that is not necessarily true for all of the numbers that have this format. So that is a description of this parameter zeta, which is defined as 17 and as 1,753 in MLChem and MLDSA, respectively.